Good morning. So it's great to be back here in uh, Riverside. I love coming back. I love coming downtown. This theater is where they showed Gone with the Wind for the first time, which is it's one of my favorite movies. I think that's so cool. Such a beautiful, beautiful theater. Um, so um, like Chancellor mentioned, I went to UC Riverside, and uh, I started drawing there when I was a freshman. I, I just walked into the school newspaper, and I had a bunch of kind of crummy cartoons, and uh, like most school newspapers, they encourage crummy because uh, from crummy, the, uh, the end result, hopefully after a couple years, is quality. Um, but it's a good place to cut your teeth, uh, um, a school newspaper. <laughs> this is me when I was four, drawing a caricature of Richard Nixon. Um, I've always drawn as, as, as far back as I can remember. Um, and uh, as I uh, got older, I started reading Mad Magazine, and that, um, that kind of contributed to my development as, uh, as an artist or a satirist or whatever you want to call me. Um, basically, what I do for a living is I, I throw spaghetti at the wall. Um, and I, I know it, it sounds weird, but um, I've learned that the more thinking you do on a creative project, the more you have time to run through options in your brain, the better the end result is, okay? And I think that sounds pretty commonsensical, right? I mean, it's not just in creative fields, it's, it's pretty much in anything. But um, I think of it on, on a creative level, you know? And, uh, 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 well, we mentioned Gone with the Wind. Scarlett O'Hara was chosen by running through a ton of different screen tests. And they eventually got the right woman, Vivian Lee. She was perfect for the role. Uh, Edison, inventing the light bulb. He went through thousands of different materials for just the right filament to make that light bulb work. And when you're painting your kitchen, you know, don't you put a bunch of different colors up on the wall to make sure you have the right option at the end. So what I do is, is pretty much the same thing. And it took me a while to learn it. It was a little bit painful at first. Um, here's a, an early cartoon I did at, uh, the, uh, at UC Riverside for the Highlander. Wow, a bonfire. Is it homecoming already? No, that's the bookstore manager in effigy. Um, so I don't show this cartoon because I'm proud of it. I show you uh, to illustrate my point. The cartoon's really not that well drawn. But the idea is not that good. And the reason the idea is not that good, I mean, burning a bookstore manager in, in effigy, that's a little harsh, isn't it? I mean, it's not his fault that the prices are so high. But if I would have given it more thought, if I would have come up with several different rough drafts of various ideas, different takes on high bookstore prices, I probably would have come up with a better cartoon. But I was only 20, 21. Kids are dumb that age. No, I'm, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I learned that the best way to, to, um, to work was to come up with different options. Some cartoonists out there just like to draw something and submit it to their editor and say, that's what we're running for tomorrow. Take it or leave it. And uh, I think that that's not the way to go. I've learned that it's best to come up with these pencil roughs. And here I am one day, uh, here's my desk, and I have uh, different variations on healthcare. Healthcare was the issue du jour. So I have Obama, uh, I have Obama and a Republican standing there. I have uh, a bunch of Democrats and Obama with a caduceus. I have Obama and a Democrat in, a, in an ambulance. Um, here's another idea. So uh, I have like five on this given day. And uh, most days what I do is I go and, and I show them to my uh, editor. And um, he reviews them, looks them over carefully. Bill is the guy pictured here. He's my boss. And uh, Bill's from the Midwest where they, they don't get very emotional. <laughs> Bill is a fantastic guy. I love him. But um, uh, he doesn't really uh, uh, emote much. Um, and um, uh, so I know I have a winner when he cracks up at one of my roughs. And uh, on this particular day, um, he, here he, well, there he is. Uh, there's Bill. 
There's Bill cracking up. Um, <laughs> and uh, on this day, he chose uh, this cartoon. So here's the one we, we came up with, and uh, it's Obama and uh, a donkey, a, Republic, a Democrat donkey, driving the ambulance labeled healthcare bill. And there's what the cartoon looks like, finished. <laughs> Oops, the accelerator stuck. This was uh, what's called a twofer. We combined the healthcare issue with the stuck accelerator issue of uh, Toyotas. That was, <laughs> that was going on in the news. I know, it's, it's not super funny, but, um, <laughs> but uh, th this was the, the, the big stories in the news back in 2010. Um, now sometimes, uh, emotion will get the best of you as a creator, and uh, even though you know it's best to come up with various options, You'll just want to go with one certain idea. And that was the case on 9-11. Uh, this is my 9-12 cartoon. And uh, I don't show it because I'm proud of it. I just show it to illustrate the point. I did this cartoon because, like the rest of us, I was so grief-stricken and, 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 you know, just kind of, you know, had the wind knocked out of me that day. Uh, and uh, and I, I did this cartoon, inked it, it ran. And almost every cartoonist in America did the exact same idea. So I went back to the drawing board the next day and I, I, I put my thinking cap on and I came up with a bunch of different variations, you know? George Bush behind the desk, uh, Uncle Sam, uh, uh, Statue of Liberty doing something else. Uh, the, the roughs piled up. And the idea I ended up with was this one, different in tone, but this idea this, this idea, well, thank you. This became um, my most popular cartoon to date, and uh, it certainly reflected uh, the emotion of, of the time. Uh, I was all in favor of going to get those guys who did this to us, like everyone. Um, and this cartoon kind of took on a life of its own. Uh, a couple years later, in 2003, I saw people carrying this around in, in posters and placards uh, saying, you know, let's go to war with uh, Saddam, you know. And uh, uh, I was against the, uh, the Iraq war in 2003, and, and I saw my cartoon being used as this, uh, as this kind of, uh, you know, image to rally people uh, for, the, for that war. But, you know, cartoons take on a life of their own. There's not a lot you can do. Some days, the news will, will be kind of offbeat. <laughs> I can't believe I have to sit at the Little Planets table. Now, I'll admit, this, this idea I read, it was buried, this story. This is a couple years ago. Now Pluto's coming back as a planet, right? Um, yes, let's hear it for Pluto. So... So this cartoon ran a couple years ago, and um, it was buried in like A15, and I didn't feel like doing any cartoons on the news stories in the front page or on the front page or, or in the uh, uh, other sections of the paper. This is what I felt like doing something on, and this was the first idea I came up with. So uh, this is a rare day, though. This idea came to me in a flash. Most days, like I say, it takes a while, and you want to make sure that it takes a while. You want to run your brain past as many options and possibilities as possible and, 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 and run the cartoon ideas through the filter in your brain and, and weed out the bad ones. Michael Vick, remember Michael Vick with the dog fighting scandal? Okay, uh, so on that day I, I, I thought of, uh, you know, ideas involving uh, dogs attacking him, uh, uh, bulldogs, um, I, 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 pit bulls, and uh, one idea involved Snoopy, I remember. <laughs> but I came up with a, a stack of dog-related ideas. Um, and this is the one, though, that I went with. Help, Lassie, it's Michael Vick. I fell into this well. Do something. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kate Middleton. Remember Kate Middleton? She, she's still around. Uh, well, she, she, got, she got engaged a couple years ago 
to uh, Prince William, and uh, uh, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, imagery that you could play with with that, right? Uh, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the beef eater, the, uh, that, that soldier with the big black hat, you know, in, in uh, England over there. Uh, there's all kinds of British imagery. Uh, so uh, I, I decided, though, that the funniest angle would be Kate Middleton's new ring <laughs> with her surrounded by the paparazzi. Um, the, uh, the, the, the Pope um, uh, was, uh, our, our, re our current Pope is from Argentina, the first Latin American Pope. So I was trying to think of uh, an idea for that. Uh, and again, there's lots of rich imagery that you could play with, with the, the, the Catholic Church and, and the Pope. And I had a nice stack of ideas on that, but I wanted to keep it simple. This is the one I came up with. Uh, as you can see, Latin America, can you see that? South America, right there? <laughs> okay. I just, just, I like to be clear, just to make sure. <laughs> um, um, Robin Williams died. So as soon as I heard that story uh, the other day, uh, a couple months ago, I knew that I wanted to do a Robin Williams tribute cartoon because I was such a fan. I came up with sketches on the genie and Goodwill Hunting, and I played with a bunch of his other movies. And I showed my editor, and uh, we, we, again, like to keep it simple. This is the Robin Williams idea. Who you went with? Nelson Mandela. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nelson Mandela. My roughs, my roughs included black and white people shaking hands, coming together in unity, um, shackles that had been broken, prison bars that had been broken, um, peace doves. Uh, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, all kinds of different ideas involving his life. But again, keeping it simple is often the best. Determination, courage, strength, dignity, forgiveness, humility, and grace. And I wrote his name, I wrote his name diagonally through the words there. You can kind of see it. It's a little hard to read. Um, I, uh, I uh, try to do a, um, a cartoon every December on the commercialization of Christmas, right? Um, that's something that we see every year. And uh, uh, again, tons of icons to play with, Santa, Frosty, Rudolph. Um, so uh, recently, the, the most recent Christmas, this is the I, idea that I used, tis the season, did a nativity in a, in a barcode. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, please stop. Um, uh, Barack Obama was reelected. And uh, uh, Mitt Romney was his opponent. And that's always a big day. That's a big pressure cooker cartoon because, uh, you know, everyone's going to be reading the newspaper the day after election. And uh, do I draw uh, Barack Obama triumphantly uh, giving Abraham Lincoln a high five? Uh, do you show, you know, Mitt Romney dejected uh, sitting on a street corner somewhere? Well, I, can't, I sketched up all these ideas, but the one we went with was this one. Mitt, <laughs> okay. so thank you. So not only uh, I, I not only um, throw spaghetti at the wall in terms of my editorial cartooning, but with uh, uh, a career in journalism and six kids, I try to do other side projects, right, to pay the bills, as you can imagine, and. Um, uh, I'm always also throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks there, too. Some of the projects work, some of them don't. Uh, this is a comic strip that I, I uh, started, um, and uh, it's called Grand Avenue. I would say it, was, it wasn't a great, it wasn't Calvin and Hobbes or, or, or Garfield, but uh, it, it's an okay comic strip. Uh, here's an app I did, Hungry Monster. I spent hours on this thing, hours. And it was actually pretty good. It's for little kids. But I didn't, I didn't make it one cent on this app. Apps are very difficult to make money on, by the way. Any of you uh, aspiring app uh, creators out there. Uh, here's a kid's show. I tried it, pitched it to the networks. Didn't go anywhere. Here's another kid's show I tried. Got a little bit more interest. We'll see, they're considering it right now. Here's a children's book I did. Just was pretty successful. Violet the pilot, a lot of fun. Here's one I'm currently working on, currently pitching. 
You've heard of the very hungry caterpillar. Ah, th that's good. I like this. I'll have to tell the publishers. This got good laughs at the TEDx conference. So this obviously is a, a children's book parody. So I would ask myself, you know, uh, I have this family, you know, to, to provide for. Uh, but even if I didn't have the family to provide for, would I still keep producing all this stuff? And the answer I came to was, yes, I would. Because creativity is something you just can't turn off. When you're a creative type, as many of you know, the ideas just come to you, you know? If I was going to do an image and present it to you right here, uh, it would be uh, a bunch of spaghetti coming out of a faucet. Spaghetti and pasta sauce coming out of a faucet is too gross, though, so I didn't show that. But the idea is, is that you can't turn it off. It's always flowing. Um, and... Uh, I really always am haunted by that song by Harry Chapin, uh, Cats in the Cradle, right? You know that song? And, and, and the, the, the story of the song is this dad feels so guilty and he doesn't spend enough time with his kids and he watches his kids grow up and, you know, they're like him when, when they grow up and they don't have time for their kids and it's kind of this cycle. So um, I uh, had this agent and she said, well, why don't you do a book uh, on, um, on things you've drawn with your kids? So throwing spaghetti at the wall. We did unicorn executions and other crazy stuff. My kids <laughs> make me draw. <laughs> and these are real drawings that I did with my boys. Like uh, Donald Trump being eaten by a T-Rex. <laughs> Celebrity cyclopses. <laughs> Different hairstyles for Bigfoot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bigfoot always gets big laughs. Or Louisiana Jones. <laughs> now, Louisiana Jones, I must say, was not put in the book. Why? You got it. Legal would not allow it. Those people at Lucasfilm. <laughs> the surfing kraken. So I had one of the biggest successes with this bit of spaghetti that I threw on the wall because there was a Hollywood bidding war for the rights of the book and Universal got the rights. So you just never know. You never know what's going to happen. So uh, uh, it's been a lot of fun and uh, thank you very much. I now have to go start throwing more spaghetti at the wall for tomorrow's cartoon idea. But I appreciate the opportunity. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you.